Hello and welcome to everyone who is joining us today. Um, we are welcoming you to today's webinar regarding why study chemistry at Koch University. We're gonna take a couple of minutes to wait for everyone who has signed up for today to join us. So I kindly ask for your patience before we start. So you are now at the Koch University Why Study Chemistry webinar. Whilst we wait for everyone to join, I want to share a very brief video introduction about Istanbul and about our university as we wait for other participants to join. It shouldn't take more than two minutes. It has sound and music, so just in case you can lower the volume on your devices. We're gonna start playing now. Okay, so welcome everyone. We will, oops, sorry, <laughs> we will get started now. Uh, I would like to first introduce myself. My name is Melissa Abache. I am the Director of International Student Recruitment here at Koch University. I'm not Turkish, but I have been living in Turkey for 11 years now. So I'm really excited to welcome new international students who will be joining our university at the undergraduate and graduate level from lots of different countries. Uh, so thank you for joining us. What we're going to do today is that I'm going to do a very short overview of the university, just highlighting some parts that were mentioned in the video you just saw and other uh, less well-known elements. And then I will take a bit more time to talk about our College of Science and then specifically the, bachelor, uh, the bachelor's in science in chemistry. However, the main part, and, and I think what's really uh, great about today is that we have uh, help from one of our busiest professors. It's assistant professor Umut Aydemir from our chemistry department. I will ask him to introduce himself a bit later. So it's a great opportunity to ask some questions that we have received via email before the webinar and for you to type your questions in the chat or in the Q&A uh, sections of your screen once we get to that part. So let's get started. Uh, for those of you who don't know, just in case, so Koch University is located in Istanbul, Turkey. Istanbul is always known as, as the city that strides between the east and the west because we have 
one side of the city on the European continent and the other side on the Asian continent. Our university is located in the northwest part of the city in the European side. Uh, we have uh, a very nice beach of the Black Sea about 20 minutes from here and we're located approximately 15 minutes to Taksim Square, which is a very well-known kind of downtown area of the city for those of you who have been here before. You can find out more about the university and living here in our website, which I will show at the end of the presentation. In terms of our university, one of the things that I, I truly love about here is the, the campus, and it's something that really strikes you when you first visit. So we're located in a, um, in a very green uh, forest area where it's very quiet, very peaceful, there's no loud noises, so it's perfect for people who like that type of environment. We all offer um, campus dormitories for students. We also have a Koch University Hospital where we have our School of Medicine and our graduate School of Health Sciences. And we offer within that campus experience all of the services that you would expect in terms of sports, health center, um, uh, food services, uh, and other support activities. Here's what I would like you to um, remember, let's say about Coach University, if this is the first time you're coming across our institution, is that in a very short time, since we were established in 1993, we have become one of the top or the top university in Turkey in several fields. Um, because we are a research university and because from the start, our mission was to really find the best talent in terms of our faculty members, as well as our students. So at, the, at present, we are still um, a medium-sized university in the context of Turkey. We have reached now over 8,000 students and um, over 500 faculty members across seven colleges and four graduate schools. So as a research university, we put a lot of emphasis in supporting and funding research activities, whether that's basic curiosity-driven research or applied research. And the Department of Chemistry, it's a great example of that. And we will hear more about that from Professor Aydemir later on. I mentioned our seven colleges. So here on the slide, you can see our academic structure. And today we're gonna to be talking specifically about the College of Sciences, where we offer four different Bachelor of Science degrees in English, which are in chemistry, physics, mathematics, molecular biology, and genetics. A few months ago, we had another webinar where we talked about our molecular biology and genetics program. So I invite you to check that um, video on our YouTube channel. And in the future, we will continue this series of webinars for the College of Science, and we will feature also our physics and our mathematics bachelor programs. I also want to mention, because I think this is very important as you're transitioning from high school into university life is that it's important to know what support services you would have as a student in terms of career planning, psychological counseling, newcomers office. In our case, we're one of the few Turkish universities that has a dedicated international community office to support all of our new international students in pre-arrival support in things like how do you obtain a visa, how do you apply for your student residence permit, permit off-campus housing options, health insurance queries, um, any questions they are able to answer and support you with. So this is very important and I also invite you to check their website. I will show the details at the end. Overall, when we talk about the university and the College of Sciences, um, it follows a liberal arts education or teaching and learning approach. This means that our program, our structure around four year curriculums um, on two semesters per year. Our fall semester starts typically in September or October and our spring semester starts in February. However, no matter what your undergraduate major is that you choose when you're applying for admission, as, an, as a freshman, you have to take required courses from the core program. And the core program is something that I will also ask uh, Professor Aydemir a bit later on about his experience. And um, there's a series of you know, whole year orientation courses and seminars called UNIP 101 that give you exposure to lots of different areas of knowledge, skills, career experiences from our alumni and people from industry, which are very valuable. Another great opportunity about studying in a liberal arts type institution is that we offer the chance to do double major. So for example, if you're a chemistry major, you can do a double major in another program within the College of Science or in one of the other colleges, except for engineering, medicine, or law. You can also do minors. You can uh, do certificate programs. 
And another great opportunity is being or doing an exchange semester at one of our partner universities all around the world. In Europe, for example, with the Erasmus program or outside of Europe, in Asia, in uh, you know, the Americas, in uh, Southeast Asia. So we have lots of program uh, partnerships around the world and it's a great opportunity to get exposure to different academic cultures and people from different countries, learn new languages, languages and that's all part of the four-year curriculum. When we look more in depth at the College of Sciences, it was um, established in 1993 along you know, when the university was first established and the principles that guide its education mission is to make sure that all of its graduates have very much, like have in-depth fundamental knowledge, in this case, for example, of chemistry, that they apply the highest ethical and professional standards when they are um, you know, in industrial or academic positions, that they leave the university with a true appreciation of lifelong learning and growth, that, uh, that growth mindset that you never stop learning. It's very important uh, for our students after they leave the university. And of course, into everything we do, we always try to embed that interdisciplinary perspective in that very complex program uh, problems cannot be solved by a single discipline or sim single profession, but it involves a collaboration and dialogue between lots of different professionals coming from different perspectives. And you get exposure to that um, as, for example, you participate in research projects as a research assistant in one of the research groups or in larger kind of central research laboratories and centers. In terms of the College of Science size and how is it uh, made up at, the, at present, it has 44 faculty members, uh, almost 300 undergraduate students. It's one of the colleges with the highest number of scientific publications last year. And in terms of the number of publications per faculty member, it also has a very high uh, ratio of publications. It also has received several quite important and competitive and prestigious research grants, whether at the national level from the Turkish uh, Science Foundation, let's say, or National Science Foundation, as well as the extremely competitive European Research Council grants. You, you may search online what this means, and, and we can also provide more guidance in our, in our website. Um, students at the College of Science can also take part and receive exposure to research practices, methods, and knowledge in one of the 20 plus laboratories and five research centers. And this translates into, for example, last year, nine of our undergraduate students appeared as co-authors in leading international journeys along with some of our professors. This is a great experience if you're later on planning to apply for graduate programs, whether in Turkey or outside of Turkey. There's also a very fun and I think valuable event that happens every year, which is the annual science and engineering day. This is alongside our college of engineering in which our senior year students present their final year projects to the evaluation of their peers, faculty members and invited members from, from industry. So it's a great opportunity for career networking and for getting feedback on your research projects. And of course, there are associated student clubs and societies that you can join as an undergrad student related to genetics, science, maths, and more. You can check all of this also on our website. This is what I'm showing on, this, on the screen now. It's just a sample of some of those publications that I was mentioning before across different uh, majors in the College of Science. One thing I mentioned before is the opportunity to do double majors. So at the moment, 9% of all of our College of Science students are doing double majors in other colleges. As you can see, the, the top choice for majors is in the College of Engineering. The quality of our faculty members, you know, you can see their individual profiles and their CVs and recent publications and laboratory or research groups. And this is also recognized in terms of the awards that they receive every year. Professor Mutai Demir, who has joined us today, last year was the recipient of the Metu Parlar Foundation Research Incentive Awards and has also received further awards later on that I will show you. So this, this tells you these are people that are working at the top, uh, you know, at the top range of quality that, and it's being recognized at different levels, both nationally and internationally. There are a series of central laboratories that you as an undergrad student also have the opportunity to join as an undergrad research assistant. 
One of the most exciting centers is Kutam, which you see on the center. That's the uh, research center for translational medicine. And what I was mentioning before about interdisciplinary perspective comes to life in centers like this, where we have professors, um, postdoc researchers, PhD students, master's students, and undergrad students coming from the School of Medicine, the College of Engineering, the College of Science, and other disciplines to solve very complex problems related to human health. Now we're going to talk about chemistry, so that's why we are here today. Here's a lovely picture of um, Professor Aydemir's research group, and I think they are at the courtyard of our school, uh, of our College of Sciences. You can see in our virtual tour all of the different courtyards around campus. So when we look at chemistry, um, this is a phrase that you see on the screen that I have taken from a, a podcast with our College of Science Dean Professor Funda Jai Avar, uh, that she says, you know, chemistry, uh, the way that we want to teach chemistry at Koch University, it's about knowledge in action. It's not just acquiring knowledge, but it's really always thinking of how can I apply this to real world problems and in a way that will not uh, continue to accelerate, you know, environmental degradation and all of the problems that we are aware of. So within chemistry, we have at present 13 faculty members that includes full professors and instructors. We have 59 students, 5% of them are international. 15 of those chemistry students are doing double majors. They can join eight experimental research laboratories, which I will show you briefly later. Last year, we had 10 alumni, so we're you know, all kind of excited to see where they go after, you know, now in their, in their first year. For chemistry specifically, the impact, the number and the impact of the publications um, presented to top scientific journals by our faculty members, it, it's truly impressive. So when we look at the, the H index, and this is something that I'm gonna leave as homework for you, if you have never heard of what the H index is, it's an, it initially was an author level metric that measures the productivity, so the volume, and the citation impact, so how many other researchers quote that professor's article or work in other publications. Um, and that index, the higher it is, uh, it tells you that it, this is a top researcher in their field. So for example, I, I read a statistic that said 84% of Nobel um, laureates in physics, they had, an a, they had typically an H index um, of uh, 60 or higher. So our chemistry department as a, as a whole between 1993 and 2020 has um, shown an H index of 61. So this tells you the impact of the work that is being done at the university and how it's having real uh, you know, reper repercussions and um, helping to spread knowledge outside of the university. One of those professors is Professor Levent de Mirel. And it turns out that he is the most cited professor across the whole university because of his work on the topic of nanostructure materials and interface properties. I do not have any technical knowledge about this, so I will ask a question about what does this entail to Professor Aydemir later on. Here, um, I just wanted to show you briefly what are those theoretical and experimental research groups that you could join if you're interested in specific topics, and we will talk about them during the Q&A session. When we look at you know, why study chemistry? Like, what do you do with a chemistry degree? I think Professor Aydemir will be much better placed to, to answer this, but these are a couple of examples of graduates of our chemistry department who graduated, for example, in 2014 and in 2011, who are now, uh, you know, they're PhD candidates or they're postdoctoral researchers at top institutions in the US and in the UK, such as Oxford University and the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, for example, in, um, in the US. So these are the typical career paths that we can see to go into academia or research through PhD programs at leading US and European universities, or to join the research and development and quality control centers or departments in industry or at government level, or for example, to join production departments of industrial companies. Here the names, again, like you may have heard of very big brands that do a lot with like chemical and chemistry, um, you know, chemical products, let's say, and as well as sales and marketing departments of industrial companies. 
um, just so that you know, if you want to keep up with some of the work that is being done at the chemistry department in terms of the faculty members, the current students, the alumni, events that they're holding on an annual basis or as seminars, I invite you to follow them on Instagram at KU College Sciences or on LinkedIn, they have their page called Coach University College of Science. So this is a great way to really start to have an in-depth look at what the, the department does. This is just a sample of some of the invited speaker seminars that took place between the fall 2021 and spring 2022 semesters at Coach University that were specifically related to chemistry. So you can see there's a wide variety of invited speakers from uh, universities outside of uh, Turkey, as well as Turkish universities and very different topics as well. When we look at the chemistry program, as I mentioned, these are four year programs. So the freshman year, your first year, you have to take core courses related to the core program and some other electives that you choose. And then also from the first year, you start to take um, some of the eight required courses that also have lab sessions. These are related to general chemistry, physical, organic, and inorganic chemistry. And there's also a required course in instrumental analysis. Then you also choose two elective courses, depending on what are your um, interests or research interests that are aimed to help you develop research skills. Then you have two semesters where you can, where you should do an independent study project under the supervision of one of these uh, faculty members in the chemistry department. And um, we are showing here some of the topics, of course there are more, but some of the topics that you could do that independent study project in terms of uh, research areas. Um, here you can see this is also available on the chemistry program website, what the first semester would look like in terms of courses, you know, the course, the credit load that you would have and the type of courses. As you can see, you do start to take chemistry courses like general chemistry one, um, and, but you're also taking some of the core courses such as academic and life skills, academic writing, calculus, physics, um, and uh, there is a, for example, this UNIV 101 courses that I mentioned, like introduction to Coach University. In your second semester, you continue to take some of these core courses, and then you continue with your required chemistry courses um, and some biology courses, for example. Okay, I'm going to very briefly mention here what are the admission requirements. This is also all available on our international admissions website, which you will see the address at the end of the presentation but we're not gonna focus on this today. The main thing to remember is that you should have one of our eligible standardized university admission exam scores or diploma. So typically applicants apply with an SAT, an AP, uh, AP scores or ACT scores, or if you have been studying the IB curriculum or eight or are preparing for A levels, uh, these are all eligible test scores. In terms of scholarships, the College of Science evaluates all admitted candidates automatically for merit-based scholarships that are tuition waivers. They don't include other benefits such as dormitory books or allowance. They're, they're just regarding your annual tuition fees and they can range from full scholarships of 100% to 25% scholarships. And in between we have 75 and 50% scholarships. On our website, you can also see um, more details about how much does it cost to be, you know, to live as an international student in Istanbul? Uh, if you stay, for example, in the dormitories or outside of the dormitories, what is the typical cost of food, of transport, health insurance, and other expenses? Our tuition for the current academic year for international students is $19,500 per year. Um, that it's likely to stay the same for the next year, but of course we publish all of this information on our website. All right, so let me just check the time. Okay, perfect. So we now have a lot of time to talk to Professor Umut Aydemir. So I'm going to kindly ask him to open his camera and microphone. Hello. Hi, Professor. Hi. Thank you for joining Hi, us. Sure. So I, I do have a lot of questions. Some of them came before the webinar from some of the registered participants. And I think you also have prepared some, some slides about why study chemistry, right? Exactly. Yep. Okay, perfect. So uh, first of all, uh, it, could you introduce yourself? Um, <clears throat> so, you know, what, what is it, where sure. did you come from and how are you here? <laughs> okay, sure. Um, so I'm a faculty member at the chemistry department. My name is Umut Aydemir. I am an assistant professor of chemistry at the chemistry department of Koç University. Um, I actually 
um, got my chemistry education at Koch University as well. So I graduated from this university and I became a faculty member at the same university. That is why I think like um, my, let's say like journey as chemist would be kind of like um, nicely fitting to uh, what my, what our basically chemistry uh, department is providing or like is willing to provide for the new uh, students. So let me just like share my uh, screen uh, to discuss about my academic background plus some other things related to the chemistry department. Um, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so um, I had my BS degrees in chemistry and physics and MS degrees in material science and engineering at Koch University, as I said. And then I moved to Germany to do my um, uh, doctoral studies at the Max Planck Institute for Chemical Physics of Solids. So it is one of the Max Planck Institute in Dresden out of let's say like um, 80 or 90 um, 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 Max Planck schools. Then um, after like getting my doctoral studies in Germany, I uh, decided to go to US to get kind of another perspective um, to study chemistry. And then I joined to Cal California Institute of Technology as a postdoctoral scholar, stayed there for two years at the Department of Applied Physics and Material Science. And then our uh, group has moved from Caltech to Northwestern University and I was responsible to build our chemistry lab uh, again at Northwestern University. That's why I stayed there another two years. So after this, uh, let's say like PhD and postdoctoral terms, I um, uh, came back to Koch University and joined it uh, in 2000, um, nine, uh, 2017, so like five years ago. So, um, okay, I just want to define a little bit uh, chemistry, right? What is chemistry? Let's say like from our perspective. So chemistry is the study of matter, its properties and uh, the changes it undergoes. So chemistry is kind of like an evolutionary field in a sense, right? It kind of like um, renew itself. So it is a central science. Uh, it, is, it is central to our fundamental understanding of many science-related fields, uh, such as energy, biochemistry, medicine, technology. Now, um, as you were discussing, uh, like currently, uh, we have always kind of like interdisciplinary research areas. You know, like you cannot answer uh, some problems uh, just solely from one, uh, let's say, like perspective, like chemistry, physics, uh, engineering, and etc. But generally, um, uh, you need kind of like uh, an interdisciplinary approach. So that is why chemistry is kind of located at the core of this kind of like interdisciplinary research. So it is the central science related to biology, physics, environmental science, astronomy, medicine, geology in every sense. So why? Because if you look at everything around you, you will see that like these are made up by uh, chemicals, right? Elements, composites, uh, I don't know, like compounds and etc. So a uh, typical car should be lightweight, right? And strong. So that's what chemists are working on to make it really strong and really lightweight. Uh, so we, do, we just like work on different polymeric materials to put your water in, for example, a typical bike should be strong again, lightweight. So uh, generally, like you need chemistry perspective to build it. DNA, it has its own, let's say, like um, chemistry, right? Bases and acids. So this is chemistry and etc. So whenever you look at uh, around, you will see chemistry actually. So chemistry is air you breathe, food you digest, clothes you wear, textbook you read, cell phones you use, right? So um, that's like a typical example I generally show in the introductory uh, uh, lecture of my courses a typical smartphone, right? So we are carrying out in our pockets a smartphone, which is kind of like uh, containing um, most of the elements from the periodic table, right? If you look at the screen, for example, so the screen is made up by aluminum silicate and glass. Uh, it contains aluminum, silicon. Uh, we put a little bit of potassium or sodium to uh, strength, strengthen it. And then a layer of indium tin oxide, for example, is used to make, the, uh, make it uh, touch screen capable. Uh, and then uh, some railroad metals are needed uh, to produce colors on the screen. If you look at the battery, lithium, cobalt oxide as a cathode, graphite as an anode. So basically this is like full chemistry, right? So there is kind of like, this is such, such an information 
uh, of the 83 stable and non-radioactive elements. So we have like around 118, 83 of them are stable and non-radioactive. In the periodic table, 62 different types of metals go into an average cell phone, which means you are carrying uh, a, like kind of like a um, periodic table in your packets. Okay, this is me uh, at Koch University. I was doing uh, MS uh, here, as I said, uh, I think the year of 2005 or six. Sealing, <laughs> thank you very much. Sealing uh, um, uh, a glass uh, for uh, Raman measurement together with uh, uh, my, uh, um, let's say like friend here in the lab. Um, so what do we um, kind of like provide at Koch University uh, uh, as a chemistry department, like, or in general, let's say. It's a very good school, first of all. Koch University is a very good kind of address for you with young and dynamic teachers working on the most popular topics of our day and the future. So in a department that contributes directly or indirectly to many products and technologies, right? In, in daily, life, daily life related to energy, related to um, catalysis, related to, I don't know, like corrosion resistance and et cetera. So very different products and technologies, even cell phones in a field with increasing importance and function. So as I said, chemistry is at the core of all these interdisciplinary um, research fields. So we hope that if you choose Koch University, if you can come here, you will enjoy the university education as well. So um, as Melissa was already kind of introducing, we um, provide broad, deep, flexible training with the core program. Um, you can get the training uh, preparing for business life and master's degree. So if you come to a chemistry department, you can get extensive uh, laboratory training. Uh, undergraduate students are generally part of our uh, research. So we are encouraging them to take part in our, uh, let's say like regular research activities. And we do publish some papers with them. So it is a program that can be organized according to students' interests and future plans, right? You can get some core courses or elective courses so that uh, besides chemistry required courses, you can basically um, um, kind of like um, develop yourself based on your interests and future plans. So we have uh, some uh, required courses needed for professional skills, elective courses, right? It depends on your interests and abilities. You can choose uh, whatever you want. You can also do minor or double major. I did double major in physics, for example. And at that time, making double major, like doing it was kind of like more um, harder. It was really harder. This time it is kind of like easier. So there are also like core lectures, right? Um, it is providing kind of like a general education and some um, diverse uh, fields. So um, in, at Koch University Chemistry Department, you can basically come and join us in research laboratories uh, with work study programs. You can attend together with us some uh, conferences, for example, uh, so that like you can learn what other groups or what other scientists in the world are doing. You can be part of our publications. That's quite important because this is the output of your uh, research. And then you can also uh, um, join us with uh, summer internships. If you need some support, you can go to Colt Coach University Learning and Teaching Offices Office. So for any course, for example, you are taking, you have hard time to understand the topic, there are Colt tutors to help you there. Academic achievement and life skills. There are freshman advisors. Generally, a faculty member is, uh, uh, one of them is uh, your freshman advisor. If you can consult them for any uh, problem you have at, at the university. And actually, all the faculty members are quite helpful and willing to help you with any uh, issues you have. So like this is maybe not an updated uh, statistics, but out of 118 graduates, almost like little half, like uh, below half of them basically are working currently in the industry. And the other, like, let's say, 60 people uh, went to um, MS, basically, uh, or PhD program. So uh, me, for example, I chose an academic path which means I did uh, P MS, PhD, and then uh, postdoc. And then I just like came back to Koch University. You don't have to do that. So you can be, uh, you can be academic researcher, but bes besides that, uh, uh, we have quite um, 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 strong, let's say like defense companies at, uh, uh, in Turkey. So you can just like be part of their RD uh, department. 
So you can be analytical chemists, clinical scientists, color technologists, nanotechnologists, pharmacologists, you know, like uh, pharmaceutical industry is quite uh, strong uh, uh, in Turkey. So, I mean, these are like typical kind of addresses that you can work uh, for industry. If you wanna, you know, like be faculty member or like, uh, in, like go in the academic path, then generally most of our alumni uh, um, go to um, Europe or US and uh, they attend the, let's say like best or prestigious universities as MS or PhD students. Okay, so uh, let me just briefly discuss um, uh, about our research activities. First of all, I will introduce my group's research activities, and then I will briefly discuss about the other faculty members. Um, so we are, um, uh, I am uh, the director of Koch University Boron and Advanced Materials Application and Research Center, which what we call KUBAM. And there we are doing uh, both boron and uh, non-boron related uh, high-tech materials. Um, uh, research, let's say. So we, we focus on energy, and in terms of energy, we are working on some superconductors, fuels and propellants, absorbers for nuclear reactions, pyrotechnic materials, right, so for boron-related uh, materials. Then we do also um, um, uh, research on uh, next-generation 2D materials, like, you know, graphene, but then there is also, like, the bor boron version of it, which is called borophene, so we uh, make refractory materials, high-tech ceramics, and et cetera. We do collaboration with other professors in the chemistry department, for example, on biomaterials uh, with uh, Safa Jan Köleman, for example. We, um, uh, we study boron neutron uh, capture therapy, or we just like uh, are growing therapeutic nanoparticles for that. And then, as I said, defense industry is quite strong in Turkey. So we are collaborating with them uh, on composite materials, missile fuels or like airbags uh, research. So for non-boron related one, I am kind of like um, one of, uh, like let's say my core or uh, main research area is thermoelectrics, which convert waste heat into electricity. So it is an energy related uh, topic. We work on batteries, catalysts and hydrogen storage materials as well. So this is Curiosity rover on Mars. Okay. So here you see a radioisotope thermoelectric generator actually. It's it produces its energy with radius of thermoelectric generators. So this is kind of like my research topic. So novel na nano and bulk functional materials. So we grow superconductors, materials displaying zero or negative thermal expansion. This is an unusual property of materials. When you heat them, they generally expand, but some materials, they don't expand or even contract actually. And we grow some laser crystals for different applications. So besides, besides my research group, there are like several other uh, uh, groups, let's say. For example, Professor Iskander Yulgur is leading the um, polymer, uh, polymer synthesis and ca uh, characterization lab. So they are working on structural design, synthesis, characterization, and structure shape property relationship of multi-phase copolymers. Professor Levant Demiral is surface scientist. He's working on functional surfaces and interface chemistry. Our Dean, Professor Fundayaji Ajar, um, so she is kind of like involved in nanoparticles, growing nanoparticles, polymers, hybrid materials, for example, quantum dots and super magnetic iron oxide. Uh, Professor Urinal, inorganic chemist, working on uh, ceramic and in, uh, inorganic layered materials. Professor Sarpkaya, he's a surface chemist actually uh, doing research on catalysis. Uh, Professor Endermetin is working on nano-sized photocatalysts metal nanoparticles, hydrogen storage materials, and other 2D materials. And for example, uh, Safa Jan Köleman, he's a, uh, he's a synthetic organic chemist doing research on uh, photodynamic cancer treatment, live cell imaging, fluorescent molecular sensors, and et cetera. So I wanted to just give you kind of like a brief overview about our research activities, what chemistry is from my perspective and our perspective, and what you can basically um, get from Koch University and chemistry department if you join us um, and be a student at Koch University. Thank you, Milit Hanum, just like providing me such an opportunity to share these things with, let's say, like potential um, uh, students. Well, thank you so much. That was a really good overview. And um, I, I have just learned a lot of new things right now. <laughs> through Great. These, uh, and it really is uh, such a, you know, the 
the range of applications of what uh, you know chemistry graduates can do. It really is, um, it's incredible. Right, um, thank you. One question that I will start with because we often receive this at seminars or webinars that we do at high schools. And then I will also ask our participants to start typing their questions on the chat. Um, because at, at the university, we offer both the bachelor's in chemistry and the bachelor's in chemical and biological engineering in the College of Engineering. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we, we get asked the question, um, what are the similarities? What are the difference? Mm -hmm. What are the pros and cons of each? Um, does it, for example, would it be advisable to do a double major in chemical and biological engineering and chemistry? So these mm -hmm. are questions we have received before that I want to um, ask you. Sure. Um, like um, chemistry and uh, chemical engineering are kind of interrelated uh, fields, mm -hmm. but I think they concentrate on little different things. Chemistry is kind of like um, uh, is looking for the fundamental understanding of the things, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, but I would say engineering is using this knowledge that you can get from chemistry and then they apply it to different industrial processes. Mm -hmm. So um, um, we are doing also application oriented research, but I think like um, one of them is trying to address the issues, like the, the understanding of the issues. Another one is more concentrated on application of this understanding into different industrial processes. That is why, yes. Um, so for example, I am teaching chemistry for chemical engineers because they have to take the general chemistry course that the chemists are taking. We have also other chemistry courses that the other engineering, other um, uh, um, um, uh, engineering programs are taking like industrial engineering, like computer engineering, but for chemical engineers, they take the same course that the chemists are taking. So um, that is why a couple of courses are already common between both uh, programs. So we have also like several students who uh, have been making double major between chemistry and chemical engineering. Yes, this is kind of like a potential field that you can do double major or uh, a minor degree. You can get a minor degree. Okay. Thank you so much. In line with that question, uh, Mohammed, uh, one of our participants, asked a similar question. What are your thoughts on doing molecular biology and genetics and chemistry as a, as a double major? Perfect, perfect thing. Because I mean, so molecular biology uh, and genetics and chemistry. So um, nowadays, right, with the pandemic, actually, molecular bio biology and genetics became extremely popular, right? Because then this is related to drugs, right? The development of the drugs. But the, the, the real people who are basically developing the drug is kind of like biochemists, you know, like, so um, yes, uh, the, the, there are a lot of uh, interdisciplinary research going on between the chemistry and molecular biology and genetics currently at Koch University. We have a lot of students who are basically doing double major between these two fields because there are also a um, um, couple of common uh, courses that they don't need to take again, you know. And then they can combine these two different knowledge, one coming from chemistry, other one coming from, let's say, more biology. And then they can just like develop kind of like better understanding uh, for like drug design or whatever, you know, like or cancer treatments, you know. So I think this this is also a very pot potential, very good potential um, uh, double major uh, fields. Thank you so much. Um, whilst we wait for other questions to come in, another question we had received was, um, and that I was curious about, uh, was how do you think your high school education prepared you for the chemistry courses that you would see at university, at Coach University, especially mm -hmm. in, in that first year, which is always, you know, the, the, that first right. transition year. Right, right. So, um, so um, at, the, at the very first year of uh, our uh, curriculum, we teach basically the general chemistry, right? And then there's mathematics, right? You learn calculus actually. And then there are other, uh, let's say like co common core courses. So um, when, when, when I teach this chemistry course to my students, sometimes like for some topics, they feel that this is not any different than their high school uh, education. But when it comes to some parts that the discussion develops basically, they realize that, okay, they didn't have this perspective or they didn't learn these things at the high school, which means, yes, 
I mean, the chemistry that you learned from uh, your high school will be helpful, right? To develop your uh, chemistry skills uh, uh, at the uh, undergraduate level. But actually, of course, like we add a lot more, right? So um, especially when these theoretical courses are combined with the experimental ones, which means you need to go to the lab, you do uh, uh, an experiment related to the topic that you learn, right? At the lecture, that basically kind of like helps you to conceptualize what you need to learn. So this is kind of like the difference between high school education and the university education. And we are, of course, as I said, we are like uh, teaching a lot more uh, than the high school. Yes, you need to get good chemistry education, good physics education, mathematics education. This will kind of like help you to understand these uh, lectures at the university better. But university education, these courses will be kind of like different than what you have learned at the high school. So um, we are kind of like trying to provide different perspective uh, to prepare the students for, let's say, like real life. That's great. Um, you have touched upon one topic, which is laboratory skills. Right. And that's something that sometimes we, we are asked questions such as, uh, you know, in order to increase my admission chances, should I show that I have done internships uh, at, for example, pharmaceutical companies or uh, you know, areas related to, to chemistry where you would have developed some laboratory skills, like some technical skills in terms of handling of materials or instruments or right. uh, processes. Do you feel students should come to the chemistry uh, program with some laboratory skills or they can be at zero level like know nothing and then they learn from scratch everything what, how is the process sure both of them are fine i think if you don't have any uh, experience let's say with the uh, uh, labs then that's fine because uh, even at the very first year this is kind of like an introductory year like the lectures are introductory the labs are introductory we start from scratch zero actually zero level but of course, if you have some experience, you know, like if you did an internship, for example, with a company or with, with a research center or whatever, then this kind of help you to, you know, like get a little bit better grades, like to uh, like understand better or like do write the report better and etc. So kind of this is this is an additional thing. This is kind of like um, a positive contribution, but you don't have to have this in order to be successful in the chemistry department as an undergraduate student. Great. But even, even us, like we encourage our students, our undergraduate student to do internship. I sent one of my uh, undergraduate students, um, I think this is his third year, to Max Planck Institute in Dresden that I did PhD. Mm -hmm. So he is there doing internship, for example, for two months to improve his skills because we have different perspective uh, uh, a scientist in the Max Planck Institute has different perspective. We have different infrastructure. They have different infrastructure. So this is always helpful. That's that's great to know. Um, mm -hmm. Talking about infrastructure, uh, we know Kutam is, for example, one of the leading research centers in, ter right. in terms of in terms of the teams, the projects, and also the infrastructure, the equipment that it's available there. Um, is there any equipment that it's only available at Koch University, for example, that people cannot find at other universities in Turkey, that other researchers come to uh, make use of at our university or that, yeah. So, um, so for individual research centers, mm -hmm. there might be some instruments that is not common in Turkey. I cannot mm -hmm. name them, but mm -hmm. there, there might be. Uh, the thing is this, I think a better uh, answer would be like that. So we have several research centers. I am kind of like a director of one of them, mm -hmm. as I said, in which we kind of like complement each other. So mm -hmm. if there is a, a researcher who needs to do a measurement, which, uh, for example, his lab doesn't have this instrument. He can easily or she can easily come to our lab, to our center and do this measurement, okay? So that is why, yes, in terms of lab infrastructure equipment, we are kind of one of the best kind uh, universities in Turkey. Mm -hmm. So for example, the high resolution TEM. So we recently purchased, I think a couple of years ago, high resolution TEM. This might be the best in Turkey, 
there are other high resolution TMs in Turkey for sure, but this is kind of like the most advanced and um, um, the, the latest uh, high resolution TEM in Turkey. So we have, in terms of chemistry, we have almost all the instruments available to do all kinds of research, like inorganic, bio, uh, organic, polymer, and et cetera, or surface science, we have everything available at Koch University. That's great. Very good to know. Yep. Um, I had a, a question, um, which was more about what type of traits or personal you know, uh, attitudes would make a successful chemistry student. I mean, we know that, you know, academically, you have to be sort of motivated, focused, constant. Based on your experience of teaching chemistry students, those that do very well academically graduate and go on to very good kind of academic or industrial positions. What were the, the personal kind of, yes, like attitudes, traits, right. uh, competence, you know, yeah, that you saw in them? Um, so I would say that. So first of all, as you said, motivation. Mm. Second thing is discipline, right? And third thing is um, you should know what you want to be, you know, like, or I mean, you should follow your dream, you know, like, so um, if you want to be real chemist, if you want to be an academician, if you want to just like go a company and then work there as an RD specialist, you should kind of like um, get these lectures or courses accordingly. You should study accordingly. So I think self-discipline, motivation, and follow your dreams. I think these three things should be combined. And this is real suggestion for the students. I mean, university is not an institution that you only study, mm. right? I mean, you should attend um, uh, conferences, go abroad. You should be part of the club activities, right? You should kind of like create other um, kind of world for you mm -hmm. that you get the education plus you benefit from the social life. Mm -hmm. You know, like you should have also these two balance. If you just study, I think this will kind of at one point um, make you exhausted, you know, like, so you should kind of have this balance as well. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, this is what our president has been saying to all of the newcomers for many years, like make sure that you do take the time to enjoy university life outside right. of classrooms, right, that, that you exactly. really develop into a full well rounded person and create, you know, friendships for life and create new communities. Can I ask which student clubs uh, were you a part of when you were a student? Um, okay, so that okay, I was really like a scientist. There was a mm -hmm. chemistry, chemistry or science club. Uh -huh. So I was kind of like leading this science club for a couple of years, but I attended some rock climbing activities, for example, as I was a student. And then I was part of some music clubs, for example. I was singing a bit, you know, like this type yeah. of thing. So yeah. um yeah, as I said, they should enjoy, they mm -hmm. should enjoy, they should learn. They should get this um, kind of like uh, basic and like advanced um, uh, trainings or like courses and etc. They should take them. Plus, they should enjoy hmm. their life at Coach University. That's great. That's great advice. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, another question we receive is for other programs, for example, is whether it's it would help if the student learns Turkish during their studies or even before they start. In terms of, I mean, in terms of campus, you know, life, I think it does help. But um, looking forward to, for example, uh, students who may want to uh, stay in work, Turkey, right? Exactly, yeah. stay and work yeah. in Turkey at you know different companies. Uh, what is your experience uh, or your advice? Sure. I mean, if they just come here at Koch University and stay at the campus, I think they can easily communicate with in English with everybody. That's that's fine. But as you said. If they have long-term plan, plans, for example, they want to stay here in Turkey and like work in a company or like at a university and etc., it's always better to learn language. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be advanced, right? But kind of like um, medium level Turkish mm -hmm. would help them a lot to communicate with regular people like outside if they want to go to a grocery store, right? Like do shopping and etc or if they want to communicate with different people, right? Not only related to their um, job or whatever, 
it is always helpful to learn. So um, that is the same for Turkish people, right? If you go to Germany, if you go to Italy or like uh, what, wherever. So mm -hmm. it is better to learn language. But as, a, as I said, it doesn't have to be at the very advanced level. Exactly. Thank you. Um, I, I had one question from one of the registered participants. I'm not sure if he's here or not, uh, but it was about what was the most difficult course or what is the most difficult uh, course in the chemistry kind of required courses that students struggle with or, or, or you know. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, this depends on again um, what they like, hmm. you know. Like, so uh, for myself, I am now, for example, like materials chemist, and that is kind of like more uh, involving the uh, inorganic chemistry, let's say. So I was always really good in inorganic chemistry. I did double major in physics. That's why, for example, quantum chemistry was hmm. quite easy for me, but for most of the chemists, you know, like if it involves um, advanced, little advanced physics or mathematics, this makes it a bit difficult. For example, physical chemistry, right? You need a little bit more physics, a little bit more mathematics, okay? So this might be a little bit difficult. Quantum chemistry would be a bit difficult. If you are better in theory, for example, there is, there is one course, for example, is purely theoretical chemistry, you know, like computational chemistry. Some students are doing it quite well. Some others who doesn't like too much the theory, they kind of fail from this course. It really depends on a uh, student and their capabilities. For myself, I really enjoyed anything uh, related to chemistry, physics, and mathematics. So I, I, I really like them. So these courses, but I don't know. So okay. if, it is, if it is organic chemistry, uh, I would be a little uh, worried, you know, like because I like more inorganic chemistry, mm. but I could do it, no problem. So okay. it depends on like your background and I think your capabilities. Great, great to know. So I think those were some of the questions we received before, some questions that I had in my mind from previous, uh, you know, emails and, and visits that we have received. Um, if we don't have any other questions from our participants today, then I think we can start to wrap up today's webinar. So I'm going to, um, if Professor Eidemir, if you can stop sharing, I will then I share it. my screen again mm -hmm. with some final information. Okay. okay, I hope you can see my screen. Right, okay. So before we leave you today, um, I just wanted to highlight a very, very good opportunity that we offer every summer to high school students and to undergraduate students, which is our summer research program. This is a research internship with faculty members like Professor Eidemir and others in each department of the university in which you work as a research assistant and you're given a specific task in the context of an existing project and you're supervised by the faculty member or um, his or her research groups, uh, PhD student, postdoctoral researchers, and master's students. There is no tuition for the program, of course, because it's not course-based. It's, it's an internship, an unpaid internship. Uh, typically, it starts in July, between July and August. There's some flexibility in terms of the start dates. And the applications for that program start in February. So please keep a note on that on your calendars if you want to join us next summer. It's open to students from Turkey as well as all other countries around the world. You can see on the screen the website for the program and it's also available on our website. Um, I just want to recap a little bit about why you should consider you know, studying chemistry at Koç University as your undergraduate degree. So uh, first of all, because you're gonna be learning about chemistry in English, which is a bit a big advantage for uh, later on in terms of career opportunities in academia or industry. You're gonna be taught by you know, internationally renowned faculty members, such as Professor Aydemir and others in the department. Um, we are also the only university in Turkey that we have a medical school right alongside many other colleges of very high caliber. So we're not a university that it's known as the best in this or the best in that is actually the, the high quality of teaching and research is across all of our seven colleges and this brings opportunities to you as a student. It's also a very free environment, which is something that I didn't, I didn't mention at the beginning. 
um, in the sense that, yes, as Professor Ademir was saying, you know, it's, it's, it's the time to pursue dreams, whether that's in the form of double majors, minors, joining student clubs, doing exchange semesters, and to define really what, you know, what you want to do with those uh, four years. It's a small class size, especially for programs like chemistry, you will be in a very small class size environment that that means that the professors really get to know you and that you have ample time to interact with them um, during classes and after classes, which is not the case in many other universities. The classmates that you will have, they're coming from Turkey, they're also among the most accomplished because they are um, usually ranked in the you know, in the top 100, 500, uh, 10,000 of all of the 2 million university entrance exam test takers in Turkey. So that means that you're, you know, you're also challenged in terms of trying to do your best by your classmates. Um, I mentioned our study abroad opportunities, and you can see all of that in our Office of International Programs website, the campus I mentioned. Um, and of course, our alumni and you know alumni placement or employment record. It's quite good considering you know it's a small program, but with very good um, results in terms of alumni placements. So finally, I would like to um, invite you to check out our website, which is international.ku.edu.tr. If you have any questions, you can email us. Um, there's also an option on our website to book a one-on-one -on -one session on Zoom. Uh, we have a calendar there and then you can ask any further questions about admission requirements, timelines, scholarships or anything else. We have, um, you know, Coach University International Admission channels on Instagram and more recently on TikTok. So we have taken the, the, the <laughs> we took the bite and we have now opened our uh, TikTok account and we look forward to sharing students' um, videos uh, and, you know, perspectives from our students, including chemistry students in that channel. And of course, our YouTube channel is a very good source of information in terms of what our students are doing in the different colleges, campus life, dormitories, and everything else. So with that, I want to thank again, Professor Umut Aydemir for sharing his time today. I know he's extremely busy. He just came from a research visit in, in Europe. I think you were in, in France. Yeah. So I really want to, to thank you for your time today. And I hope uh, our uh, participants today will have found this useful and that if you have any other questions that you keep in touch. We will be posting this video on our YouTube channel uh, tomorrow. So you will be able to see it again anytime after that. And if you were not able to join us today, then you will also receive the link to the video recording. So with that, we're very good. You know, we did very well in terms of keeping to the, <laughs> the scheduled time. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Aydemir. Any last uh, words for participants? Um, so I am wishing my best for their future address, whether at Koch University or not. So yeah, um, all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Professor. You're welcome. Have a, have a good you. afternoon or morning or evening, wherever you are today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.